Hello again, this is Rob Wagoner from MyCloud IT, and today I want to continue the discussion of the management capabilities that MyCloud IT brings to your Azure deployment. Our last discussion, we covered details, virtual machines, the users in groups. We're going to save Office 365 for its own discussion. We talked some about desktop collections. Today, we're going to drill into Remote App first, and I want to show you some of the capabilities we can provide with Remote App. So now that we're on this screen, we can click Add, and now it's going to ask you to deploy a Remote App collection. So on this deployment, I have my choice of Windows 8, Windows 10, or the Golden Image. If we leverage the Golden Image, this gives you the ability to build your own session host, install your own custom applications. We deploy that within a Remote App deployment, then we come back and expose your applications. So step one is that we choose the Golden Image, then choose the storage account name. We've already been through here, so it auto-populated. Then we actually identify the container name all the way down to the particular virtual machine. MCIT Demo 6, which is the name of this deployment, underscore image. I'm going to leverage that image. I'm also going to bring up the number of users, so I'm just going to go ahead and say four here. Define our storage per user. Again, even in a remote app scenario, we still have storage available we can add. I can take a peek in advanced options and get very detailed around the session host configuration for this remote app. I'll go ahead and click create now and it's going to start creating this remote app deployment for us. So what I'm going to do is stop this discussion now. We'll come back to this later and I want to point out a little bit about the scheduler. So to create our own we go in here to add and we can create a schedule. So the first thing we want to do is talk about start, stop, or restart. Well, why do you have a restart? Think about some of the third-party applications we run, and, well, every now and then you just have to reboot your computers because, well, there's memory leaks or performance issues. So we give you the ability to schedule this restart event, and you can do this like at 2 a.m. if you're going to run 24 by 7. But for now, what I'm going to do is set up a start resource group and then I can define when it starts. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and say start tomorrow morning. What time? Well, we go to work at 8 o'clock, so let's make sure our workload is up before then. 7.45 or maybe even 7.30. So we give you 15-minute increments. How often do we want this to happen? You can schedule a one-time event. Or you can have events run hourly or even daily. Let's do a weekly event recur every single week, so we put a one in there, and I just want this to happen Monday through Friday. And then we take just a minute for this to process. Now what I'm going to do is come in and add a stop event. So if you have a scenario where your business only runs 8 to 5 typically, if you shut your workloads down outside of the work hours, you're going to save a lot of costs from Azure runtime costs. So pick shut down or stop. I'm going to name it Shutdown. This, we're going to start this tomorrow night, and we'll start this at 8 p.m. And we want this to run every day. Now, here's a trick I learned. What I'm going to do is say shut down every day at 8 p.m. But why, Rob? You only set up to start Monday through Friday. Well, let's assume that somebody has to work on the weekend. So they may come in and manually start up the deployment. They can do that through the details pane. How many people remember to turn off the light switch? by saying every night, even Saturday and Sunday at 8 p.m., execute this shutdown event. If your virtual machines are up and running, we know by 8 o'clock at the end of the day they'll shut down. So now I can click Submit. But before I do that, in this iteration of the scheduler, we're starting and stopping or restarting the whole resource group, not individual virtual machines. We're about to update this scheduler to give you more granularity so you can, on a virtual machine basis, do this. If, before we get that update out, you need individual virtual machine granularity, please just open a ticket and tell us what virtual machines you need and what kind of schedule, and we're happy to set it up for you. Okay, back to clicking Submit. Now we've gone and defined two events, a startup and a shutdown. So what I'm going to do is come back to you in a little while after that remote app deployment has finished, because that's going to take about an hour and a half to run. Okay, so now we're back and the remote app collection has deployed. 
you can see I'm in my remote apps tab and I have the new remote app named my new remote app. If we drill into it, we'll start here with details. Remember I added my own description and here's the user group. So as we go to manage users access to this remote app deployment, all we have to do is drop them into this users group. Remember in the users group section I showed you, you could go into groups view and mass add people. Host server, so RDSSH1 is my RDS server. And then I can do fun things here like delete it. We're not going to do that, right? Because we want to drill into it. Remote app session setting. When the session limit is reached or connections broken, what should we do? You get to define that. This manage button will give you the ability to make any changes here. The other great thing is the disconnect session limit. So if they've been disconnected for more than two hours, we're going to go ahead and log them out. And this is really beneficial when we think about taking some of those hosts offline after hours to save on costs. Client settings. How do we want to manage our client environment? So what about device redirection? You get to control this. By default, we've enabled everything, but you can come in and, of course, squeeze that down and then even number of redirected monitors. Load balancing setting. Let's work off the scenario that you want to have two session hosts. Maybe session host one here is like in D1, which is what we built it to be. Maybe you want to build like a second session host into like a D4. So it's a whole lot bigger. You leave the small one, least expensive, running 24 by 7. So you always have 24 by 7 abilities even outside of normal production. But you want the big one available as well during production to make sure everybody has a great user experience. This way, what you could do is set the session limit for the small one and the large one to make sure those get balanced appropriately for their hardware. And you have the ability to manage costs while providing a 24 by 7 capability. So I moved over into security settings. How do we want to set those? And then the last one, how do I publish these remote apps? So I have the collection, but currently I don't have any apps deployed. These are the applications available. It goes and it queries that session host you just built. Remember, we built off a golden image. So I can go here and choose Manage and pull the files that are available there. So we can choose Adobe Reader. I put Firefox in there as well. We're going to grab the obligatory calculator and paint. So these are all the things we're going to expose via remote apps. We click Save Changes here. It'll take a few minutes to process this. And we can go back in when this is done and actually look at what we've deployed. So success. OK, so we've updated the remote apps. We clicked Manage. We came back to here. And we still see these red X's. We're going to continue to see these red X's until the pending task is finished. OK, so now we're back after we've loaded the applications. And you can see that the items we chose now show up. How do I see those in my UI? If I go back to Details, I can click right here or, again, leverage this link down below. We'll flip over to this page. And we're now back at our landing page where we can see all these apps show up. While I'm using a full Windows desktop here, I could also be using a thin client, an Android device, a Windows phone, even an iPad or an iPhone, and have this same experience and run powerful things like Firefox, the full browser, even from my phone. OK, and as I showed you, we're able to even start Firefox and run that in a window. And it behaves like any other window on my desktop. So that's all I wanted to show you today. We were able to build a remote app collection. I spent a few minutes on the scheduler. I look forward to talking more about our scheduler when we actually update our scheduler and add more capabilities. But until then, if there's capability you need out of the scheduler that you don't see there, please open a ticket and ask us. We'll be happy to help you out with that. That's all I have for today. So thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a great day.